Hi everyone, it's Joanne from Plymouth Medical. I hope you're doing well. I um, wanted to do a quick video on uh, quality control and orthobiologics. Um, today we're going to do a little introduction on our Hariba Micros ES60. That's a hematology analyzer. It's a three-part diff hematology analyzer, which means it actually breaks out the total white blood cell count into monocytes, lymphocytes, and the granulocyte family of which neutrophils fall part of. Um, so we find that this is a very, very good device for point of care characterization of whole blood or baseline blood um, and final PRP uh, so that you can quality control um, and establish a dose, um, establish your level of contamination in white cells and red cells, um, and also calculate your X factor quite uh, rapidly. So this device here actually um, will basically sample 10 microliters of either whole blood or PRP. I'm um, in less than 60 seconds, give you a full um, 16 parameter reading of, without any need for dilution. And that's quite key um, because this device here is actually cleared by the FDA for up to 4 million platelets per microliter, um, which for those of you that know anything about hematology is quite key because um, when you're using a high-yielding uh, PRP system, such as our M-Site uh, Pure PRP, um, you're often able to concentrate platelet concentrations for up to 20 times baseline. So that's a lot of, um, or a very concentrated amount of platelets. Um, so no uh, hematology analyzer will basically give you an accurate reading other than this one. Most hematology analyzers basically will cap your platelet range at around a 2 million mark, uh, with this being twice that amount at 4 million platelets per microliter. Um, there's no need for dilution, which just com further complicates uh, quality control and um, cell counting at the point of care. Obviously, as you know, platelets, um, when they come in contact with plastic, when they come in contact with air, they do tend to um, degranulate and Therefore, um, it's very, very important when you're doing uh, point of care platelet counts um, to basically use the right equipment. So Jeremy Magalon and his team in Marseille did an excellent job um, basically showing the best practices that they've learned over the years in quality controlling their PRP at the point of care and found that the KDTA tubes um, actually were um, the best and most uh, stable in their reading. Um, because uh, that anticoagulant is, provides a lot of stability to the platelets. They tend to not clump so much, um, and uh, they provide for more accurate readings. So if you're interested in more of that, um, we'll show you the link uh, while, where you're able to um, read a little into um, best practices and uh, hematology. I'm going to take the final platelet value in the PRP and divide it by the average uh, baseline uh, levels and see that it's a seven time uh, concentration on this sample. So uh, salient points here are that we started with 60 um, mLs of anticoagulated blood. So six mLs of anticoagulant sodium citrate, 54 mLs of whole blood, which we characterize to have a baseline of a roughly 220,000 platelets per microliter. Uh, then we processed uh, our protocol A, uh, which is um, a neutrophil poor PRP, which will also um, check to see whether that's accurate or not um, with the hematology, and found um, basically created uh, six mLs of a PRP from that. Um, we're actually treating um, a smaller um, a smaller joint today. So we then uh, took a couple of drops of this uh, PRP into our micro retainer around the sample, and you'll see that um, the final platelet value here is 1559. Um, so we took 1559 divided it by 220 on average and found a seven time uh, baseline increase over uh, the patient's baseline values. Uh, other pieces of um, information that should be um, important for you to sort of glean from this data um, in 60 seconds is that obviously lymphocytes and monocytes have elevated or been concentrated um, lymphocytes and monocytes are actually um, A granulocytes. They are uh, much uh, less dense than their neutrophilic um, leukocytes. So uh, they basically remain in suspension in the, in the plasma after our first spin. 
and are therefore selected along with the platelets for further concentration in the second spin. So um, calling this type of PRP a leukocyte poor PRP is actually a misnomer. Um, it's actually a mono monocyte rich uh, neutrophil poor PRP um, that is actually quite also very low in um, RBCs or hematocrit. So the hematocrit on this PRP is 0.7%, so less than 1% hematocrit um, in this final PRP. Um, that's um, almost, if you can see a little residual here, almost a salmon color. So uh, don't be uh, put off by salmon colored PRP. Um, red cells go a long way in um, basically tinging samples. So all this to say is a very quick overview of what the hematology analyzer um, can do for you in helping the quality control of your baseline and PRP at the point of care and have very little time. Uh, the other thing I wanted to note here is that obviously with um, all of the regulatory concerns surrounding perinatal products at the moment um, and their use in orthobiologics, um, we have basically seen and wanted to take part in moving the science forward, not backwards. So these types of devices um, will not only quality control and establish a dose of what you're actually treating and, and tie those injectates to patient outcomes, but we feel that it's really going to sort of move the science forward in better understanding what cells are at play, what's actually being done, and what you're actually injecting in your patients. So if you have any questions, feel free to give us a ring, 888-392-5076, or reach us through our website and um, basically um, organize a, a conference call with us. We have a function to do that on PlymouthMedical.com, and we'd love to have uh, further discussions. And um, we're also gonna do further videos on our total nucleated cell counter, which is the Chemomedic NC200. It's a completely different device that will quantify uh, nucleated cells. Um, so very, very gross uh, measure of the stemness of your baseline bone marrow and your bone marrow concentrate. Obviously, bone marrow concentrate being the only um, stem cell treatment in orthobiologics that is um, on the right side of <laughs> regulation and also bone marrow concentrate and um, also having the only level of data. So BMA has no data, as we all know, in vivo. Um, so if you're looking to characterize bone marrow at the point of care um, without having to culture the cells, without having to run your um, baseline and your concentrate through flow cytometry, which can get quite expensive, um, this total nucleated cell counter basically will give you an idea of uh, how good your draws have been. And as those of you that have been doing bone marrow concentrate for some time now will know that it's all in the technique. Um, so this device here will give you um, an indication of cell viability at the point of care in a minute um, and also give you your total nucleated cell count. So all of the cells that are actually in the bone marrow are quantified um, if they have a nucleus. Um, we do actually uh, lyse all of the nucleated RBCs prior to analysis, so know that um, those nucleated red cells that are actually present in bone marrow aspirate and, co and concentrates are effectively lysed prior to characterization, so they're not included in the final nucleated cell count. Um, again, any questions, please feel free to reach out, and we'll be delighted to have that conversation with you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.